<laughs> hey yo, where my 80s and 90s babies at? Man, I know y'all know what's coming, right? I know y'all know what's coming. <laughs> Ooh boy. Banking on longevity Set up beef with anyone who's stepping up to test with me Drop a track and cop in there I can't hear the copycat 20 years, 10 deals, haters must acknowledge that Hey guys, it's Cody and Kenneth here And we're going to be talking about Toys, I guess, again <laughs> Um... You know, this, that we haven't already talked about. Yeah, the ones we already we haven't already talked about. But the ones that – the topic that we were going to do before Jurassic Park is going to be um, – it was supposed to be about the toys that we grew up with compared to the toys now. And, like, seeing how much toys have changed since the 90s. Because I think if we can all agree – I mean, even other decades, I think it was the 70s and the 80s and the 90s were probably the best years to collect toys. I mean, the 70s, you had your Star Wars. The 80s, you had your Ninja Turtles. Ninja your Turtles, Transformers, G.I. Joe. The 90s, you had... Where the fuck do we begin? <laughs> Basically. So, it's just... You know, there are things that I'm going to... I'm going to compare it to, like, things that are earlier than the 90s, of course. But, um... God, where do I start? I mean, I'll let Kenneth pick up here. Well, I guess we should probably start with the ones that we remember that with our first memories, the ones that we remember earliest. Okay, well, my earliest memory is uh, the Batman Kenner toys. Yeah, we the ones. Yeah, you me- we mentioned some of those during the Batman rep- video. I don't think we really went much into it. Um, Okay. I wanted to, but we were talking about it, uh, the animated series, so we had to kind of dive out of that. Yeah. The Kenner toy, Kenner doesn't exist anymore. Kenner went out of business, I believe, the same time around, um, uh, God, what was that other company? Uh, there was Kenner and something else. Tiger? I don't there was other toys for Tiger and, yeah, it's just certain things that the companies went out of, out of business. Just wish you had them back because they would have probably, done certain things to toys that have been released through like Hasbro and you know Bandai now is just crazy yeah but, pretty much these days it's mostly Hasbro Hasbro that's dominating the market yeah Kenner handled um I think they handled the uh they handled Batman and I think they handled Star Wars back in the 70s didn't they also do the Ninja Turtles I I don't know Rock the really wiki <laughs> um but I, I mean, there's just so many things to talk about you don't know to start with. And like I said, the, the Batman stuff. You compare it to stuff like now, you guys have, like, kids now have Brave and the Bold. And, um, I mean, even the Batmobiles from the films from The Dark Knight seemed crappy, you know? Um, it, it, the Tumblr is such a blocky design anyway, but there was barely any gimmicks. Here's one that really pissed me off. When The Dark Knight Rises came out, they released the bat. You remember the bat? Yeah, the bat wing, basically. It was a flat, like, uh, it was basically an upside-down helicopter, but it was like a, it was a hovercraft. It was like a flat piece of black plastic. And it was supposed to be a represent the same design as the, the tumbler. Mm-hmm. This thing, this toy, cost $40, and all it was was a handle... And a cockpit. Whoa. It, it had anything whatsoever. Um, and un, you didn't even have, like, a motorized or a button on that handle You to have, like, the propel, propellers move or anything like that. Kids, back when we were little, the Batmobiles we had um, did something. <laughs> like, really, they had lights, sounds, you name it. And... You know, that's another thing I should mention. The lights and sound functions don't really go well with a lot of things now, apparently. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've kind of disbanded that stuff. They're, they're not 
they don't really exist in most toys anymore. Oh, hi, dog. <laughs> but, dog um, again. the Batmobile I remember was the Batman Forever one. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I had everything Batman Forever, and that Batmobile was one of the first ones to light up. Um, I don't remember if someone told me that the headlights on the original Keaton one lit up or something. I don't know. Uh-huh. But um, I do know that in Batman Returns, when they re-released that vehicle, something called the Bat Missile, you slammed it in the, to the wall and it like broke apart. <laughs> so there were gimmicks. There were literally things that they thought of at the at the at the company. It was just something that they did. Um, uh, speaking of the missiles, if I could just interject for for a moment, you know how a lot of those missiles back then were like spring loaded. Right. These days, I'm looking at you, Transformers Prime Voyager Class Ultra Magnus. They are not spring-loaded. They just rest in there, and you push them, and they don't even go out. It's basically friction, I guess. Yeah, friction or it, pressure. And they don't do anything. They just... Whoa, you want you two inches? Why? I think even in the early or late 70s, early 80s, parents complained about long-range projectiles coming out of toys... And I only how complain was that they went under the couch and you can never find them again. <laughs> that, yeah, what was fun about missiles was it actually gave imagination to your toy. I, yeah, I, like, I, don't... I remember I had the Starfighter from Star Wars Episode One, the yellow one. Mm-hmm. It had the lights, the sounds, and it had a little missile. Well, guess what happened with that missile? I lost it's it under the funny. couch. Yeah, and you know what's funny? You never find it under the couch when you move. You move and you think it's going to be under there. It's like, today is the day I finally find that missile. No, Where'd it go? No, <laughs> no, but, no, but sometimes you do move the couch because you're moving in. Oh, hey, look, a $20 bill. Yoink. Yeah. Mine. Mine. Buy you All mine. <laughs> um, and and I, I'm going to probably save the best for last because that's the thing I do now is collect a certain brand of toys. But, um, yeah, Star Wars would be another example. I mean, yeah, they do have... Um, black the Black Series, which is adult uh, collector toys. See, that's the thing that really pisses me off now, is that if you want a really good quality product toy, you're going to have to spend a lot of money to get it. That's when they mm-hmm. sit there market it off as an adult collectible. Um, the Black Series line for Star Wars are basically high sculpted detail, paint, everything, and those can cost around just thirty dollars per or figure. More. Or more. And you typically see these things at Toys R Us. See, Toys R Us is not just for kids anymore. I know this is a topic I should dwell into at some other time. But it's not, you know, after uh, this controversy about breaking bad toys being sold in stores. <sighs> that. that um, people seem to think Toys R Us is just for kids now. Um, well, Toys R Us came out... Uh, it was it in the early seventies, late eighties, early se- or early eighties, late seventies, something. something like that. And you know, there are people who grew up with Toys R Us and still I go don't there. Grow up. For- I'm a Toys R Us kid. There, there is true. The slogan is true. You don't want to grow like up. Go on, you- go on, go get mommy. Sending my dog out of my room. Yeah, but um, you know. It really frustrates me that Toys R Us is the only company that can handle adult toys. Um, otherwise, you'll have to buy it on the aftermarket on eBay and stuff. Well, but well, you're the, forgetting about NECA these days. NECA does do some re- very I'm looking good at my toys. Godzilla figure uh, up there on the shelf. NECA's bread and butter is Godzilla and Batman, basically. Yeah, they do others, mostly uh, based off of video games like Resident Evil, and I think they've done a few Spawn figures. I wouldn't know about those. <laughs> Only Spawn I remember was the one from the uh, was the eighties the, movie, the late nineties, yeah, ninety seven. Oh, the nineties movie. I've seen once. I remember yeah. finding it enjoyable, but other than that, I don't remember much. Yeah, Except John was almost but, a fat uh, clown. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never <laughs> look at Luigi the same way again. Yeah, but um. The thing, and even the action figures, not even just, not even vehicles or mechs, um, 
the action figures seem to have um, gimmicks, too. Uh, in 89, the Batman, I remember a Joker that you would dunk his face in the water and it would turn white. He used to be, like, the color, regular color tan. Okay. Yeah, the, and, yeah, the, yeah, the and, Hot Wheels yeah. Matchbox cars used to do that, too. And there, yeah, there were and, toys based uh, on that movie Dinosaur, where if you got him wet, you could see the skeleton inside. Right. I mean, kids are probably going to sit here and go, what the hell? Where were these when I was little? It's, you weren't even born yet. You weren't <laughs> even a sperm. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the point. You ki- The kids think, well, it's just, it's a toy. It's supposed to do something. I mean, hell, like I said, I I, don't, I can't hold myself anywhere. That's not the best for last. Power Rangers is a Are good example. talking about the Megazords being bricks? The Megazords back then actually did what their TV show counterparts did. The transformations, sometimes the lights and sound, even the attack modes. I think the last Megazord that actually did what it did in the show was Jungle Fury. No, I wouldn't know. I never watched Jungle Fury. Uh, oh, I I know that Jungle Fury had that spinning action where he like did like a tornado kick and then his upper oh. torso would spin. And that's what the Megazord does. Then you go straight to RPM the next season. It's pre-Zord Builder. So it's basically, it doesn't do anything. You're supposed to be able, you couldn't even, I could. I don't think you could even put the uh, the cards or whatever in it. Which was a gimmick. No, the no, Japanese no, I ver- think, hold on, wait. No, I'll have to go back and watch Davy Unit for it, Davy Unit for his review again, but... I don't remember what exactly the RPM one did, but as far as I know, it just stood there. You combined it, and that was it. I mean, that's one of the things that makes me mad. Is they Bandai seems to think the only fun thing about Megazords is combining it. And after that, you know, now what? Yeah, exactly. It's just like you're like you get the toy for Christmas, you play with it for like a minute, and you're like, okay, it's combined. What do I do uh. now? <laughs> I've got all these Megazords um, right here, and I have a ball. <laughs> um, you know, even the original Mighty Morphin one, that, that was probably where the best um, is to, to describe. Um, those were simplistic designs. You had a T-Rex, a Triceratops, a Sabertooth Tiger, a Mastodon, and a Pterodactyl. You had to figure out how to combine all five of those and in order to com- um, complete the set, you had to buy two other Megazords to combine it with to make another Megazord and then the Ultron Zord. Where was the? Where is that gone? You can't even do that uh, anymore. No, you I can, mean, but here's the thing. You, I know we should probably save this for Power Rangers, but you take a Megazord, you put another Megazord on top of that one, you put another one on top of that one, you put another one on top of that one, it just becomes what's known as the Clusterfuck. <laughs> Basically. And you, the toys now, yeah, they make their own designs. For the Megazords, they don't even follow show design, which was an original idea. They allow the kids to make up their own monstrosities. So that's where all the clusterfucks came from. Basically. Uh, you, you consisted of cycles, it consisted of separate Zords. Now, it consists it, of tra- it, it, now, it can, now over in Japan, it consists of trains. That, uh, that, yeah, Japan's doing something now with trains, and I think next year is going to involve, oh my god, the name, the name of the new Sentai. Oh my, let's not get into this, this isn't even Power yeah. Rangers. But I like <laughs> trying to say, the, to- the toys, c- comparing them from 20 years ago to now, it's just like, why? Why has everything changed? And someone told me it's because the price of plastic and paint is expensive for companies, and I'm just like, I can go buy my own, my own molding kit my own resin and all that for under like a hundred dollars, and probably make a better toy. Well, in some cases, it kind of is for the better because I look at my Transformers toys and I'm like, well, thank God they don't suffer gold plastic syndrome anymore because Beast Wars was played with that. I'm looking at you, Torque. Yeah, it's another comparison. It's another comparison. I mean, yeah, I watch Sean Long and Shardimus Prime's videos. They have G1 um, like gold masterpiece plastic figures. Those syndrome. look beautiful. It. Uh, you compare Bayformers now to Bayformers from, what, 10 years ago, which makes me feel old <laughs> as hell. <laughs> the the toys, even before Age of Extinction or Dark the Moon, the toys actually attempted to do something. Um, I'm supposed to be getting the Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime. That thing is, like, the best representation of the movie uh, Optimus uh, oh, Prime. Oh, 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 I've got nightmares about that one. 
Which one? Leader oh, class, Revenge of the, Revenge Fall. of the Fallen Optimus Prime. Two days to figure that son of a bitch out, even with instructions. See? See? This is the thing. They actually gave you a challenge with the Transformers. Now you have one-step changers, you have four-step changers. I'm just like, why? Why has things changed so qu- so quick? And it's just different. I don't like change. I don't want change! <laughs> <laughs> and, um... You know, and another thing is play sets. You notice how some play sets don't even, uh, the play sets were the biggest thing in the 90s and the 80s, I believe. Mm-hmm. They don't even, sometimes they don't even do that anymore. In some cases, it'd be big properties, like Ninja Turtles. They did a complete the sewer Technodrome. base. The Recently, new, they did do well, the sewer tower from the new sh- show, but. That's, that's the only thing I've basically seen. If you were to see a play set, it's usually involving Barbies. Yeah. That's what Barbie marketed on, not just because of its dolls, but it was the play sets, the cars, everything. That is, like, one thing that has not changed is Barbie. But for some reason, the boys' toys have changed. Yeah. So, do you have any, like, uh, specific toys you remember? Beast Wars. Beast Wars were the Transformers that were basically animals, yep. right? Love, love the show. Uh-huh. I love the toys. Actually, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fanfic writer, and actually, I just back in August, I finished writing a sort of fan sequel slash remake, which took me ten years to do. Yeah, and back to the play sets. Like I was saying, with, even though we got a Ninja Turtles one recently, um, for certain films, Batman, for instance, they released a full on Wayne they, Manor. They, they and a Bat Cave. They do the. The Firehouse for Ghostbusters? They did the Firehouse for Ghostbusters. They did um, they did the Jurassic Park gates with the fences. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and, you know, it's basically, you know, the way that toys were supposed to be marketed is towards, hey, play um, just like it was the, the movie, you know, um, or TV show. Hell, the TV shows are a good example, too. I, another show I remember was Beetleborgs. They did just as much as they did with Power Rangers. It's the same company, Saban, same that made VR it. Troopers. Beetleborgs, that too. Um, but I saw very little VR Trooper merchandise when I was little. Um, but Beetleborgs, they released all the vehicles. They released the Hillhurst Mansion with all of the monsters. It's just amazing that some of the things that they do... Hell, even with Power Rangers, they released the Command Center. It was called the Power Dome. They couldn't even um, get the name right. <laughs> <laughs> it, had, it had a voice changer to make you sound like Zordon, but really it sounded like your grandpa that was dying of laryngitis or something. Alpha sent to us five teenagers with attitude... <coughs> Sorry, Tuberculosis <laughs> is acting up. <laughs> exactly what it sounded like. Oh, God, you know what? Maybe that's where they got the idea for Zordon dying in the movie. Yeah, and then there was also... There were some cases where toys were made of back chrome. Whatever that is. Uh, or vac- or it was back metal is basically really shiny oh, vac- plastic. Oh, vacuum metalized. Yes. Like, C-3PO would be a good example. They would, like, completely back metal that stuff. Um, Alpha 5, they released in the Power Dome. He was back metaled. Um, yeah, you don't see that no more. You really do not. Unless it's adult Pretty collector much. stuff. And, you know, that stuff apparently is considered expensive now. Um, there's such a short time, in, but when was the last time you considered an actual toy a toy, though? That's the big <sighs> question. And playability wise. You know, you wouldn't just buy the toy, hand it to the kid, and expect him to be done within a minute after figuring it out. I really couldn't That's tell you. That's a pun, by the way, figuring it out. Oh, love that show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God, wait, please tell me I didn't just do the secret slime action. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no, no, but I can but, tell you, especially when it comes to, like, Lego's building sets, like their construction figures, the quality has certainly dropped. I look at my... Oh, a bionicle's up on the shelf. 
Bionicle stars. What the, I, I went to go put Takanuva together, and I want to put his arm into the slot, and not even using any force, the one connector joint just broke right off. That's another thing. The how flimsy plastic is now. I look at some of the toys that I do want to collect in fear of breaking just by moving their arms. Here's an, another example. Toys that are supposed to be based off of, or kind of tr- being a tribute to the older counterparts. Um, you have a new line of Batman toys for Batman the Animated Series coming out. And my friend Shardimus Prime did a review of the Batman, and the hands would, you kind of like figure arts have your I own hands. I think you've seen about this before. Point. Yeah. The the pegs on the hands broke. He described the hands feeling like they were gelatin. Probably were. Like a very soft, rubbery plastic. So, um, and they just broke off. And you know who did these? DCUC. Um, the uh, DC Universe stuff. So DC actually did these toys. It's not like they're um, some kind of like third Marty or a third party market. Or, <laughs> I don't know. How to say. Hey guys, there's a third Marty in Back to the Future. Oh my! Time travel's funny that way. <laughs> but uh, it's it, it, I can't really say much about toys and how they've changed. It's a topic I wanted to mention, and I was thinking about this a long time ago. It's just like I'd have. Certain toys when I was a kid, and then I'd go to my Walmart and look at how cheap some of these are, uh, the toys now. I know. Um, even the toys, um, even for the toys for the new Ninja Turtles, which is something very popular. The um, Ninja Turtles, of course it is. Yeah, but still, you didn't see people going batshit crazy over the movie figures from the recent movie. That's because Michael Bay's name was slapped onto it, which is why everybody wants to hate on it. Yeah, well, people need to chill out. <laughs> um, you are the devil. And, yeah, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm just like, could the toy industry go down the crapper? Like, can there actually be companies 50 years from now still making toys and still exist? You know Hasbro's going to be around forever. Has- I know Hasbro, Hasbro be possibly Mattel, company- maybe Play School. At a time in the 90s, we thought Kenner was the, like, sheer genius and of they, toys. And then they got they bought did. out by Hasbro in 2000. Yeah, because I guess their company wasn't really succeeding as much. I don't know how to explain this. They, I guarantee you if Kenner was still around, they would have done um, the Batman toys for the Dark Knight trilogy and probably would have done them better, oh, quite too. Possibly. It's It's just hard to say. I can, like I said, I've I've looked at some of the toys from now, even in 2008, back when they did the Dark Knight toys. The Joker looked horrible. He looked like he had a comb over, or with like ba- uh, like points of his hair that would like would show he was Heath Ledger, sort of white face, beady eyes, and a line that represented his mouth. What? Basically, I was just like. Okay, even back when we were little, the toys looked like their counterparts. Uh, the animated series, you look at it, it looked like the Joker. Yeah, you you look at Batman and it looks just like Batman, even that massive fucking chin. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe that, and uh, like I keep saying, that with toys now, there's hardly any collector value in some of them. Like, certain movies, you get excited, you're like, oh, yeah, I wonder what they're going to do with the toys, and then it just, like, Transformers, for instance. You had the first movie, their toys were pretty cool, Hasbro did those. The second one, the third one's where it started getting downhill, and the fourth one, Jesus Christ, oh, my God, the way that they did the transforming on those figures. Yeah, I know. When I reviewed Voyager Class Grimlock, that was actually probably the most slightly negative review I ever gave, and that thing is still a disappointment. That is considered the best uh, best Transformer figure in the Age of Extinction line, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I know, but it's just 
one, his proportions are all weird, and two, his flimsy little dinosaur arms keep falling off. Let's just describe these Transformers figures. It was basically a stationary humanoid Optimus Prime with a like a vac metal thing. His arms moved and his legs moved, and then you basically just folded its panels into the back of the of the uh, figure. There's like no mystery with it. It's like the easiest Transformer ever, and you could still see the the what they call back form. No, it's not. The first wave of Beast Wars toys were, they were basically the flipping change. It was basically the very first Automorph. You pull the tail or flip the tail up, boom, robot. All you got to do now is straighten up the arms. Well, they tried to do that with Age of Extinction, too. Like, the Dino Bots, they tried the to do that. The flipping change. Yeah, they were like Swiss Army Knife kind of gimmicks. So, or, yeah. I, I, I Transformers is probably the best example um, in the 80s, which those toys are, like, really yeah, rare. Yeah, I know. I've heard stories of vintage still-in-the-box G1 Optimus Prime going for upwards of twenty five grand and climbing at auction. Jesus, and you got to realize this was only 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and pretty much it, even more, the most – another toy that's just about as sought after as that one is Beast Wars Cheetor because there were, like, three different variations, red eye, green eye, blue eye. It's like, why are you making three variations of Cheetor with a slightly different eye color? Yeah. We all know and, Dinobot's the most uh, popular character. Hell, he beat out Soundwave and – Hell, he and Waspinator beat out Soundwave and Starscream in the Transformers Fall Hall of Fame. Yeah, and then um, going back to Power Rangers. If again, I can just say something, uh, I can also notice there's a difference in weight to these figures. Like, I'm holding my Astro Megazor, which is actually a black, gold, and white. And, okay, he's maybe less than one pound, but I felt... You still felt the hell heft in it. It was Yeah, it was I mean, hefty. I could tell this gold on him is, okay, maybe it's not die-cast, but it certainly gives off that illusion. These days it would just be, eh, let's just slap some yellow paint on there and call it gold. Yeah, and it, that even happens with a and, lot of and figures he now. he does I'm, have a battery back compartment for lights and sounds, but it doesn't work on mine because it's so damn old. Right. Well, has it been 17 just about. years? Jeez, it makes me feel old. So I remember seeing these things in the store when I, I was a kid. I remember your face when I showed you this thing. The black oh, really? Astro Megazord, you were like, <gasps> Yeah. Look, but I found the thing at flea market I'm for five still, bucks. I'm still collecting Power Rangers toys, even the newer stuff, but that's why I'm trying to say it's the Power Ranger toys now, even the figures are stationary, but back then, you had gimmicks. Karate the figures. action. You had karate action. You had auto... That's another thing. Not even just Power Rangers. There were other toys Batman, that did that. There was that. this one figure, which actually, pretty unfortunate implications, because depending on how you have his arm, it can either look like he's giving somebody a, a titty twister or he's jerking I off. Can't. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing I was going to mention. There are toys that just seem so right to make, but were so wrong in the end. One example would be a McDonald's toy of, Muf- uh, not Mufasa, of Rufiki from Lion King trying to hold up Simba, and the gimmick was to pull a lever, but in actuality it looks like he's, like, humping Simba instead of holding him up. If you heard a slap, that was my hand hitting my face. <laughs> I-, I would have to find a video of this, because I know Watch Mojo did a video of it. And um, there was, and there was a... T- <laughs> I hate to say, there was also a, in the 99 Tarzan movie, there was a Tarzan that looked like he was jacking off, and he also had sounds where he was saying, doing the Tarzan roar. Oh, my. <laughs> yes, toys back then did things. In, in, in You would have to have a dirty mind to notice. I don't even think kids would notice this, but the parents would. It's just, it's really weird that some of the things that they made kind of, like, the design flaw with it is, it's astounding. You don't see those anymore, really, Not do really. you? You don't, you don't see mistakes like that anymore. Back hold in up, the 90s, up, you up. couldn't notice Yeah. Them. Okay. Can I do what? Hey, we're going to have to put this on pause because dinner's done. Okay, well, I'll, we'll pause it and get yeah. back. After these messages, we'll be...
be right back. So anyway, before Kenneth had to go eat dinner... I'm back, bitches! <laughs> we were talking about the quality of the... Um, of the toys and, compared to the 90s and now. And if it turns out that we were not, feel free to bitch at us in the comments. Yeah, pretty much there are going to be people who are just like, this This is nothing compared to your other 90s talk episodes. We, I kind of wanted to step out of the movie and TV show genre, which is, you know, something I talk about way too much. <laughs> but um, the, the thing that we wanted to do was talk about a topic that kind of related to Stuff, a comparison, you know, and, I, because, I, and you just said you wanted to kind of get out of it for a week or two, but I, I, I'm sorry, I can't help but say this. Um, after watching the movie Toy Story, did you ever think that your toys came to life when you weren't looking? When I was little, I probably did, but now I'm just like, it's a stupid concept, but it's a classic. <laughs> hey, Small Soldiers was a stupid concept. It was a ripoff. <laughs> that was what it was. It was Gremlins with action figures. Yeah, it was, uh, I remember when they promoted Small Soldiers <laughs> at Burger King, I was, I'd get the toys and I'd get the cups, and, uh, and then we see the movie and we're like, this is goofy. Yep, a young, very hot, preteen Kirsten Dunst. Oh, hey, Joe Dante predicted what I'd be doing for most of the Spider-Man movies. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, back to the topic here, even though it was kind of related to toys. Um, yeah, that's actually something I should mention, even in, uh, t with Toy Story, um, the toys were pretty cool. I remember the Buzz Lightyear was ex material, fleshy. I don't remember that, but I do remember while I was over in Afghanistan, when, during my stint in the army over in Afghanistan, I was talking to one of the guys who was, he was 15 when the first Toy Story came out, and he said that he went to go see it with his girlfriend, and he had this little Woody doll with him, because the movie had been out for a couple of weeks. And he, uh, oh yeah, I see that. He, uh, he left the movie theater and he went walking around the mall. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at your thing and I see a dragon about to eat a kid, but anyway. <laughs> Just call to ignore my screen. <laughs> ignore the man behind the curtain! <laughs> but, uh, and he was walking around the mall asking random people, Have you seen my Woody? Have you seen my Woody? <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember the Toy Story toys were pretty popular too. Just as like, just like any other Disney but I, movie. But you know, I think, I think that Mr. Potato Head was already an existing toy. It just, it was Toy Story made it more popular with kids. Cause and I'm not going to lie, they made Barbie hilarious, especially when you realize that Ken in Toy Story three was voiced by Michael Keaton. <laughs> it's like I'm never going. It, it, it's like yeah. oh my, I can never take. Batman seriously ever again. Now, I may be wrong, because I don't remember seeing a lot of Toy Story 3 toys, but I think they kind of did re-package um, the older toys into the newer stuff. They're just, you know... Oh they, oh, they certainly did. I mean, it seems like Disney does more um, with their toys than any other company. I was actually thinking about this. Does Playmates exist anymore? <sighs> I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Let's rock a wiki. Just so anyone knows, when I say I'm rock, when I say rock a wiki, it means I'm looking on Wikipedia. Yeah, because he said that like four or five times in my span of like what six or seven episodes. Something like <laughs> that. Okay, we're Playmates toys. No, I, no, we're not talking about Playboy Playmate though. That would be cool. Oh, Playmates did some pretty cool toys. Hmm. No, it looks like they're still around. Let's see what all they've done. Hasbro has the rights to Star Wars now. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. They have done the Addams Family. Oh, they're licensed characters anyway. The but Addams Family, like Ants, Atomic characters. Betty, whatever Barnyard's Commandos is. Ooh, Coneheads. Uh, yeah, they, yeah Disney. they do Disney things like Disney Princess, Disney Fairies, Darkwing Duck. Let's see here. What else is there? Ooh, Jackie Chan. Do, do, do. Oh my god, it's Jackie Chan! Oh my uh, god, it's Jackie tailspin. Chan! They must have done a lot of the Disney stuff back then, then. Yeah, but they're only li listening like three or four, eh, whatever. Yeah. Another company that people probably have never heard of, Ertl. Who? E-R-T-L-E. 
type it in. They had they, the only toy I remember they did back then was ba- the worst comic or video game. Movie it says it doesn't game. exist. Uh, there's no page for it. Hang on. Twenty minutes later. Oh, they actually exist now or still? Wow, that's amazing. They do plastic model kits, diecast kits. That's Farm basically. toys. In 1993. Um, I think diecast they, airplane sets. Guess what they did in 93? The Super Mario Brothers movie toys. Bet you never knew those existed. No. Hang on, I'm going to pull a commercial real quick. Hey kids, I'm here to tell you about two extremely famous plumbers, Mario Mario and Luigi Mario, from the Super Mario Bros. movie. You want to know what makes them super? Because they triumph over the evil Koopa and his brain psychics, Iggy and Spike, using only their plumbing tools, and they battle the Goombas. Koopa's hideous dino human army. Those Goombas are scary. The Super Mario Bros. action figures from Turtle. But don't worry, they're not real. Okay, number one, I never heard of Ertl until, until now. Number two, those toys look pretty cool. Number three, those were when toy commercials were good. Yeah. And you instead of like, oh, hey, look, here's a toy. It was like, they they might as well, but back then they might as well have been flashing, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Yeah, because you guys got to realize something. Back when uh, the 80s and the 90s, the best way to incorporate um, and other than movies, of course, uh, which is to promote a product, is that they actually went all out with their toy commercials. Um, most of the toys would either actually be played with on screen, or they would be made, um, they'd have the actual actors from the movie or something. Now you just have CG models. And you had that back then in the mid to late 90s as well, but not as much as today. Not as much as today, no. Sometimes it was cool. For an example, again, going back to Batman Forever and even the earlier Batman toys, they actually had commercials um, where they sh- they had an actual environment with the toys. <laughs> like uh, Batman and Robin, God help us, actually being as innocent as we were as children. <laughs> 1997, the Batman toys from then, I remember the environment that they do. With Poison Ivy, they'd actually have plant life. With Mr. Freeze, they'd have actual ice, looking ice on the road, and then the ice blocks and stuff like that. They actually tried to go out all out with their toys back then. But like I said, now, it just seems... They're they got unapp- lazy. Yeah. It's, a movie, or toy commercials had a, a, looked like it actually had a budget. At, at, and, you know, it's really hard to say that toys now can't live up to stuff in the 90s. Because there are good toys now. I will say that. There are there are very few, though. Yeah, they're, um, they're few and far between, but they exist. They do exist, but they're very few and far between. Exactly. I mean, if there's a recreation, like, say, like I said, Power Rangers, you had the good stuff back when we were kids, but they're recreating the older 90s Mighty Morphin toys into something called the Legacy line, which is made of die cast. They recreated the Morpher. Um, they're basically props. Or actual prop replicas made out of die-cast metal. And those are good, but nothing compares to the nostalgic feel you have with those older 90s toys. Of course not. Um, like, even now, I want to still have certain things from when I was a kid. Like, um, I still want to have all the, the Batmobiles I had when I was a kid. I still want to have some of the Micro Machines. You remember those? I remember Micro Machines until the Nostalgia Critic brought it up in his most recent commercial special. I'd forgotten about Mighty Max, which is essentially Polly Pocket for boys. <laughs> you remember that guy that talked about in the Micro Machine commercials? He was, like, really fast-talking. The fastest man, the fastest talking man alive. Could you... You know what? <laughs> yeah. I, I can't hear him doing an audio book. He would go by so damn fast. <laughs> And you, that's a, that's really something else, too. They actually tried to make a story with some of their toy commercials. I forgot to mention that. Uh, this guy that we're talking about, he he was fast talking. He belonged at an auction house is where he belonged. I forget his name, but everyone just called him the Micro Machine Man. 
Well, that's where he's mostly known. But and he's I think been, he uh, is literally the fastest talking man in the world. I think you can say a total of like, I, I think his record is like 30 or 40 words per second. Jesus Christ. I, yeah, I, I, I remember what did him. did you just say? <laughs> yeah, it's just, you, you, you would understand uh, that with, with him having the actual toys in hand, but if he was off screen just talking to you in person doing that, you'd like not understand what the hell he's saying. No, you, you know, um, it's, and sometimes I can catch a word here or there when he's doing it, but it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but they did micro machines other than actual vehicles. They did. I remember the power Ranger I, I one. Remember, I remember having some of the power Rangers, my micro machines, the Batman forever. They have like a Riddler and Batman head. It's supposed to recreate the scene where, uh, in the Riddler, uh, was the scene where he throws the battering at that really weird looking, uh, um, would look like a trophy basically. <laughs> um, and the Batmobile or the Batman one was obviously the Batcave, but they had many Batmobiles. I was just like, but, it, but it that kind of goes back to what we were mentioned before: is that micro machines were not only one big vehicle and a bunch of tiny little vehicles, but the big vehicle opened up into a whole playset. Exactly, and they did that with the Batmobile, too, I think, at one point. Uh, one thing I also want to mention is, even with the Micro Machines, they put so much detail into sculpting and painting those even things. Even those be, teeny, tiny little things. They would be the size of your fingertip. And, and, you, and yet, if you looked at it under a microscope, you could see all the fine, little details. Nowadays, it's just like, uh... Just toss it in a bag, don't even worry. It's just like the mold. It's like if you were to... Would like draw a silhouette in 3D of like you wouldn't even be able to notice what the hell it is to be honest with you. That's, that's, they did micro. That's, they did micro machines today. It probably wouldn't be as popular. That's that's another thing is that a lot of the toys back then. Like again, I know we said we would worry about this another time, but the Power Rangers, the Triceratops, the Saber Tooth Tiger, they had actual wheels for the 2010 and the Legacy di- dinosaurs. They were just molded plastic. And a lot of people yeah, do that another, anymore. It seems to be such a... Um, what is wrong with the wheel? Why are you people afraid of the wheel? And another thing is the fact that they're kind of skipping out on the rubber. The you remember rubber wheels? Yes, I do. I do remember rubber wheels. A lot of my NASCAR toys had rubber wheels. I, I, I'm looking at my Batmobile from 1995 now, and obviously those are plastic wheels, but... That's because of the way it was designed. Uh, um, Generation 1 Optimus Prime had rubber wheels. Certain things like that. If they were based off of a Mack truck or an actual truck, it's going to have rubber wheels. Um, I think in some cases, model kits used to have rubber wheels, didn't they? <sighs> Can't think, can you? <laughs> the only model kit I ever put together was a was a. Gundam and the damn thing kept falling apart on me, but if I'm trying to remember back to my grandfather's model kits, and I think more often than not, they were plastic, but I think there were a couple rubber tires thrown in there, and I think those actually fetched for a more hefty price because of the rubber, because I think rubber is a bit more expensive than plastic. That's probably why it's so taboo now, is because people don't actually go... Um, thinking about, hey, wouldn't it be cool to actually have treads on these vehicles? But, you know, they don't do that no more. You, you don't even see rubber tires on vehicles anymore. No, they don't. And I um, think another thing they don't do anymore is uh, I had this – it was a Digimon place that had the little Digimon figures, but it was also like a carry case where you could put the figures in. But when you open it up, it was a board game. So you could not only play with your figures, but you could also play a board game. And the board game was double-sided. There was a – Game on one side, you flip it over, there was a game on the other side. Right. So you could do whatever you wanted with it. You could use the case as a lunchbox if you wanted to. I think one more thing that we should talk about is the role-playing weapons. I was actually going to mention that because I'm holding the power lenses that I bought off you a couple years ago. That was you? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That's that's crazy. Yeah, go ahead. And, And... Actually, I remember when I pulled them out of the package, which also came with, I think, those playing those playing cards and uh, yeah. the Karate Action Black Ranger and Zero Ranger 2 Yellow. When I pulled these things out of the package, I was actually trying to put them together <laughs> to form the actual lance, and then I realized uh, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, 
weapons. But yeah, role play weapons. Any more? It seems like the only thing close to a role play weapon is a Nerf gun. Right, and, and there's nothing wrong with Nerf. I mean, come on, it's Nerf for nothing, but still. Nerf was a little bit more popular in the 80s and 90s than they are now, to well, be those honest. Fucking badass commercials. You know, there know, was that one were, kid with the Nerf Turbo Storm, I think it was called, who thought he was fucking Rambo. Remember the sergeant, uh, the the screaming sergeant ep- um, commercial for Nerf? You mean the one that was basically made us think we were watching sword, Full Metal water. Alchemist? I mean, not Full Metal Alchemist. That's an anime. I mean, Full Metal Jacket. Was it a was? Did Nerf do water squirters too, or no? Am I wrong? There's probably a super soaker. Nerf commercial super soaker about. mostly, I think. Yeah. But anymore, I, the last the the last roleplay weapon I saw was. Actually, a ninja. Well, okay, you've got the Power Rangers morphers. It always goes back to Power Rangers. What the hell? It does. But but there was but there was also. Okay, here we. Okay, here is an example. The only role playing toys that we probably get outside of Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles are stuff for movies. Say Thor, Captain America, Batman. Oh, pretty much. And even then, mostly it's just a mask. But the you do things like that you compare to now. I think the last time that we had a good Power Rangers role playing toy was in Samurai with the Mega Blade, and you mean the spin, I remember, you mean the spin disc, spin sword? No, 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 no. It was an actual life size sword, the one that folds in on itself. Oh, the one that they use to control the Megazord. Yes. Um. Well. Anyway, the. The last time I remember that it was the Mega Blade, but I don't. I remember when you actually had smaller versions of the actual props, like the the Power Blaster. You had five weapons that combined into one. You, you had, had the Blade uh, Blaster. You had the Blade Blaster. Now that was an actual. That was an uh, actual full size laser gun. That was a gun right there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And it and it converted into a sword too. It did exactly what it did in the show. It's called a Ranger Stick. Mm-hmm. Um, Geez, what else? I think there on itself, there was plenty of toys up until uh, I, I stopped collecting after, I believe, Lightspeed Rescue when I was a kid. There was some amazing toys for Power Rangers. Uh, yeah. Power it, Rangers- it, it wasn't a Power Rangers toy. It was a Nerf gun. It shot, like, tennis balls. It was pump action. But the thing looked mm-hmm. too much like the Power Axe. I couldn't help but use it like that. Right, and, and, you know, and then there was also this sword, this knight sword and shield, and the shield was embroidered with a big silver dragon on it. Now you see a lot of toys like that now. Like he's talking about swords. They uh, they are foam or rubber. The one I ha- the one I most, had was yeah, hard plastic. I mean, if you whack somebody with that, it freaking hurt. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it, you like you said, you either have foam or rubber now. Um, where it's like a pliable material, even with the Power Ranger toys now, you can't get past having to put the sword or the roleplay weapon in a in a freezer just to, you know, keep its form. Back then, we didn't have a problem with that. We literally had plastic swords that would break if you bent them. <laughs> now, now the Power Lance I'm holding, yeah, the blades are very soft PVC, but the actual handle is. Hard plastic. I mean, if I were to whack somebody with the handle, it would hurt. It would probably leave a good welt. Yeah. Um, I don't know uh, if you remember this, but do you remember the um, role-playing weapons for um, the Batman movies, like, back then? They actually had full-size batarangs. Honestly, no, I don't. They were... Okay, they had... They weren't really full size. More, they were just in a part of a place era. Like, I guess a, a set. It would include like the belt, a mask, and then also would have like a um, a battering on a string. I guess just for illusion. But those were really thick plastic. Nowadays, it's like hollow. It's like those things you'd use if it was a squeaker toy. <laughs> but, yeah, basically, just, just annoy the dog with it. Yeah. One thing, speaking of which, uh, I don't know if Cereal does this anymore, but every now and then they would come with a with a toy. Uh, S'more Cereal, one time when the first Spider-Man movie came out, came with this little web shooter that you filled with water and shot out and hooked it to your wrist and used it like the web shooter. I used to tease the cat with it all the time. i fill it with water, squirt, squirt, squirt. Yeah, we have, uh, I think those existed back even in 94 when the um, animated series came out. 
But the first time I ever heard of one that actually shot web was from, like, the second Spider-Man movie. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It had, like, a little cartridge of what was essentially silly string. Yeah, it was a can uh, that you strapped to your wrist, and it was supposed to make an illusion that you're actually shooting web shooters. <laughs> but um, now, I, back then I thought it was cool, and now I'm just like, what? Um, oh, another thing is, we were talking about gimmicks earlier. I keep going back to Jurassic Park for some reason. <laughs> okay. Don't tell me there was a jump attack raptor. There was. I you, was joking. There was. There was a small raptor that made like a weird sound. It sounded nothing like the raptor. Um, but you pulled its legs back and it jumped forward. Clever. You were literally joking. Yeah, it was actually. <laughs> It really sucks that you think you think you're joking and it actually exists. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, but what I'm mentioning is not only did they stop at sound, they didn't stop at sound, which is something that they did all the time with toys back then. Lights and sound were like the biggest thing. You had a fully functional. It was made of rubber. The dinosaur, first off, they were all made of rubber. Remember that. Yeah, especially the skin of, like, the bull T-Rex. Which, yeah, yeah, I watched Jurassic Collectibles review and then his giveaway video, and I'm looking at that thing going, that's it. That's the one that I had. Hmm. Yeah, I heard him talking about how that was, like, the most expensive Jurassic Park T-Rex. But anyway, uh... (laughs) But, yeah, the thing that really frustrates me now is that toys are just cheaply made. That's all I can really say. Um, when we were kids, we, we used to ask for the practical stuff. Vehicles, play sets, action figures. Kids now are getting some really crappy action figures, first off. Yeah. Uh, and vehicles. Like, some vehicles don't even make sounds. Or lights. I who, haven't who even... Makes a, I don't... Who makes a vehicle without lights? I don't know, but I haven't actually seen a decent RC vehicle in a long time. It's, yeah, that's true. Um, what happened I, to Tycho? Tycho. Tycho, oh, that's yeah, a spell RC. RC. Yeah, remember those commercials? I mean, I know there's air hogs, but that's a helicopter that you buy off of the TV. I don't know about anybody else, but you know what introduced me to RC cars? Huh. RC from Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> Because I actually had a full-size RC car from Toy Story that you controlled with a remote. It looked like it just jumped out of the movie. I'm not even kidding. And uh, <laughs> That's Oh, thing here's another good. thing. Where the hell... Ha- what happened to the wind-up toys and the tracks that they usually have with the remote-controlled con- tracks? The last one I saw was 97 with a Batmobile and Mr. Freeze's really crappy metal like thing from Batman and Robin. I don't know. What I want to know is those... Ho- those Hot Wheel tracks, the ones that you had to put together, and they had, like, these mo- motors that you, uh, you put the car on, and that you gave, the, and that gave, yeah, the, car, and that gave the car enough momentum to go and go through the loops and around the lamps, and they had gimmicks like a T-Rex that would tear the track apart, and nowadays it's like, uh, here's a garage. It's very sloppily put together. Expect the thing to fall apart in two minutes. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the, the things that we had as kids were very fun. And I, I'm going to admit, I took for granted in some of the things I had as a kid. I think a I, lot of us did. We broke them. We threw them in the trash. Mom would sell them at a yard sale, and here we are. We have each and every one of them probably 50 to $100 a piece. And, you know, the sad thing is, is toys now, I don't see toys now actually going up in value like they did 30 years ago to 20 years ago. Unless you know what I'm saying? the package, that is. That, that too, but who would want a brick Megazord or a brick Transformer? Who would be interested in something like that? It's, it's, the reason why things are so rare is because of how much fun they used to be and how, how gimmicky some of the things were. Um, yeah, I know. And it's, it's just not there no more for kids now. And that may be just me, but I will admit a new generation likes newer stuff. And I, I regret saying that kids are probably you know, a little less uh, or more impressed with these things um, because they're kids. What do you you expect? Yeah, I know. 
you put a toy in front of their face, they're probably going to play with it. I mean, hell, when we were kids, we played with McDonald's toys that looked cheap compared to things we'd buy in stores. That Sadly, I consider the McDonald's toys now, um, I compare both uh, toys from now you get in stores to McDonald's. They're basically the same. Might as well. I look at some of the things my nephew Caleb has, and I'm like, is this a licensed toy or is it coming out of a Happy Meal? It looks like it, it, some of these things do look like they come out of Happy Meals. Like, oh my God, some of the things that they release with the Power Ranger line, like these these vehicles or these cycles, the cycles is one of the things I'm just like, these things look like they can be packaged in plastic and be sold at McDonald's. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, it was about a year ago, I think it was, we were at the dollar store and Caleb picked up this Power Ranger Samurai, Blue Ranger with a motorcycle, and I'm looking at it going, this Blue Ranger does nothing but move his arms up and down, and he's constantly in a squatting position. He came out of a Happy Meal. The paint, dude. Uh, That's probably one of the biggest things that really makes me mad is the lack of paint that is given um, for toys. And you have big companies like, uh, you know, Bandai doesn't do paint. They don't like doing paint. But big companies like them will still do adult collector's toys. That's what I'm saying is they do adult collector's toys. They're going to sell them for $80. Yeah. And that's expected. If you want something from your childhood, you're going to have to pay. That's the thing. Or get really, really lucky. Kids now, I don't, like I said, I don't see toys going up that expensive. Even used. Even, hell, even new, I wouldn't see them. Nope. Uh, but actually there's, there was actually a, it's, it was at the end of Toy Story 3, and actually when that scene where Andy's leaving his toys with the little girl, and he's leaving, it, actually, yeah, I know, uh, this might sound a little cheesy, but. I know what you're gonna say. Some, sometimes I'm... when you have to give up, sometimes when you've had a, had a figure for so long, and then you have to give it away, or give it up, or you lose it, or whatever. You do feel kind of sad because if you, because especially if it's something like Woody and the gang who had been there for fifteen years. It's not just that, Kenneth. It's and I know what you're saying. I I looked at that scene as that was like that was where it was telling me that's the end of my childhood. It was like looking at that movie. It's like it's like it's of, basically saying, saying Andy's all grown up. You need to grow up too. Pretty much, but. But it, I do, I do like how before he leaves, he kind of looks at him and thanks him for all the fun times they've had. Yeah, because you know when we grew up, we remember Andy as this little um, somebody we looked into as kids it, it, with even our toys. And you know, I hate to go off topic. Well, this really isn't off topic. <laughs> it's it's kind of related to you know toys. Um, it, those things are just as much as a childhood memory as say a movie or something or a you video did. game yeah a movie a video what, game a book what did you get as kids what would you ask for for as kids for christmas it's always a specific toy as kids you know and um when grandma always gave you a pack of underwear and a pack of crowns what did you ask her for you asked her for freaking toys that's what you wanted was toys yeah, I know. When when I was a kid, I actually had the more more fun with not as much my Power Rangers toys, but more Beast Wars and Bionicle. Yeah, because they, like I said, the more gimmicks, the more actual realistic these toys become, um, then the more popular, more playable they are. Not not, and, not only that, but Beast Wars and Bionicle, and by extension, Lego, actually kind of made you think because Transformers is three toys in one. It's a vehicle or an animal. It's a robot, but in between there's a puzzle. Bionicle right. and Lego is something that you have to put together. There's no mystery with toys anymore. It's no, just there. No, there's not. I, I looked at Lego's most recent line, Hero Factory, a few years ago, and I didn't even need the instructions. I put the things together, and they were so damn flimsy that a few weeks later, they're in the trash. Right. Right. I remember when the first Bionicle toys came out was like in 2003, wasn't it? 2001, and I got both the and I got some of them up on my shelf and they're still very well put together. I shall direct you to my seven to my seven part series where I reviewed them. But right. which 
they're still very well put together, and I'd say some of the best qual some of the best quality the Legos done to date. I just I, and you know Legos has been around here forever. Legos has been around for oh yeah, like eight forty years, ninety years, <laughs> something like that. I don't think they've been here that long. Uh, no, Lego got their start after World War Two, so like the sixties or seventies. I don't know, but they've been around for a while. Yeah, well, who, when you think about toys, you're not going to sit there and jump around and say, Batman, Power Rangers, you're going to sit there and say the practical things like Lego, uh, Mr. Potato Head. You know what my mom remembers, and this is going to sound weird. You know, she says she says the same thing we're saying about toys now, but we're really telling the truth. Toys now just don't look right compared to what we grew up with. No, they don't. She, uh, she said that she used to have something called... A wacky worm. It was a worm that you rode on. It had wheels. You pushed forward and kind of bent its front and back legs, and it just rode wrong along the road. Yeah, she remembers those. That was a while ago, then. A really long time ago. She remembers Weeble Wobbles. She remembers the original Star Wars toys. It's like, why the hell didn't you buy those when you were little and just kept them in the package? We'd be rich right now. Because, because when you're a little <laughs> kid, you're not thinking about what, how much it'll cost in, 50, in 20 years. You're thinking about uh, how much playtime you can get out of something. Do you know what's really weird? Is that growing up now, I had to convince my mother that toys now would be expensive. And that's the thing. I have toys that I paid seventy five to almost five hundred dollars for. My mom understands now. She understands the toy collecting market is probably the biggest thing to go into. Even if it was, if you were to hold your own business and sell your toys, you'd probably bank out. Oh, it's incredibly high. I watch American Pickers and Pawn Stars from time to time, and they bring in like these wind up toys from the late eighteen hundreds oh. to the early nineteen hundreds. These Dick Tracy toys from the twenties and the thirties, and they go for pretty high. I think the highest that I ever saw uh, it was uh, Snoopy and the Red Baron went, oh, I know went, went for. Uh, I don't remember how much it was, but it was well over one hundred and fifty dollars, I think. Right, and you know that's that's another thing is okay. Yes, early on when toys became popular, say Star Wars, there was a the butt of the joke was that if you were older and you were sitting there collecting them, your parents would sit there and say those things wouldn't be worth anything. They're going to go in the trash one day, and they actually did go in the trash one day, but. You look back at it and sit there and say, I want to go back to look and see how much these are worth. And you go look at one that costs $1,000 and you want to beat the shit out of your mother. <laughs> see, 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 that's another thing. That's another thing. It's sort of like, I, I guess you could stay looking at some of them as like looking through a photo album. It's like going down memory lane. Like, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that one, although I had them stuffed at the bottom of my toy box for like ever. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I go back. I, I think it's fun going back watching toy commercials on YouTube, you know, because it brings back the best of me. It brings out my inner child. But still, I want to actually own it to have an actual thing sitting right in front of me and actually look at it and say, I remember when I played with it. I remember when I broke it, too. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, you know, some of the things that I sold, like my mom bought a, I think there was a big 90s line for Star Wars, the original trilogy. It's a big-ass tabletop Millennium Falcon. Oh, uh, that's another thing. Toys that involve... Um, spacecrafts or vehicles the millennium falcon oh my god they had hidden panels in the floors in in the walls you know i think you know I, you know i think i know the one you're talking about but i have oh, geez, it kind of opened up it was a suitcase i like, haven't seen that thing since i was like seven i know i i, I want it back i went on ebay and that thing goes for almost 500 bucks i'm I sure i can't fathom that I, last time I looked, I can go on there and probably it'd be cheaper. Maybe it was the wrong one I was looking at, but, you know, I just, I, there were just some things. I had the X-Wing, too, from that line. Um, yeah, my dad had a, a full-on prop of Darth Vader's helmet. So, What, the actual breathing sounds? No, 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 no. It wasn't no voice changer thing. 
Damn it. You had something you'd wear as a cosplayer into a convention, which was new at the time. You believe that? I believe in the 90s, um, cosplaying and uh, conventions were still a new thing. Really? Um, I, I, I would have figured they have been doing it for, for a while. It just hadn't caught on in the mainstream. I've heard people say that there were things in the 70s, but it was more of a business opportunity thing more than fans. Uh, or a fan uh, convention, it, it was more for business. It would make sense, I guess. I watched uh, Comic Book Men the other day, and a guy came in with a comic book that was only a convention exclusive from 40 years ago. Wow. would believe he went in. He had every signature from Bob Kane to Stan Lee to co-creators, people who created the Joker, who created Riddler, he had autographs up the ass, and I'm just like, man, 50 years, 40 years ago, I wish I was at that convention, because Bob Kane is like the, you know, the pinnacle yeah. um, father of comic books, just like Stan Lee is. Bob Kane is the father of DC. Stan, Stan Lee, Lee is the daddy of Marvel. And I'm glad I have Stan Lee's autograph. Oh, yeah, because in about 30 years' time, that thing's going to be worth quite a few hundred bucks. Oh yeah, he's he's um he's not gonna be here forever. No, I'm telling no, you, he's not. He's got to be in his early eighties by now. The, and that's another thing that uh, bringing back the toys. Toys from comic books are like the biggest thing right now. Um, I haven't seen um toys outside of reviewers that w- one reviewer wouldn't have something about comic book related satire. Like they'd have Spider Man. They'd have Batman. They'd have things I'd never heard about, like Super Go Go Man, <laughs> Young Blood. Um, I feel sorry I, for I, Linkara. I wanted to end on a on a cliff note. There is something called Hot Toys. I don't know if anybody has ever heard of it. My friend Sean is a big collector Sean of them. Long. I think. Sean, yeah, Sean Long, he's a really good friend of mine. Go check out his channel. He's like 155 subscribers, or 55,000 subscribers, I'm sorry. Um, he's got a lot of hot toys. I mean, I'll post pictures of some of them. They're impressive. They will run you $300 a piece. Um, That's not including the shipping. Including the shipping, yeah. I had a, a Hot Toys at once, but it's just too much as a, it's a, as a collector that's stepping out of my comfort zone. Those things are very fragile. They're they're basically really expensive Barbies with um, nice, uh, uh, lifelike sculpting detail and faces and um, real material used from movies. It's crazy. Uh, my friend Sean actually has the Hot Toys uh, Batmobile from 1989. Wow, I, I you go look at a video of that. That thing is amazing, and that thing cost almost a thousand dollars. Sheesh! And, and we remind you, people some some of these people make a living reviewing these things on YouTube. Make a living toy collecting and reviewing. Up to bottom is Sean Long, Shardimus Prime. Yep. I'm sure, there's a well, few others that I'm missing. Sean and Char- Shardimus are, like, my favorites, and they're my cl- one of my closest friends when it then, comes to yeah, toy collecting. Then there's everybody off of CollectionDX.com, but they mostly review Japanese mecha. Pretty much. Um, Power Rangers related, there's a lot of good names. Bruno and Mia. Boy, I love them, too. Maybe <laughs> Yeah, and, you, and that's another thing we should talk about, because I do not have any kind of, like, memory or knowledge of this but i do want to talk about one day toys now compared to toys in japan and other countries uh, i do have international viewers i know that some of you out there have been asking about certain toys i've never heard of um so maybe one day we could talk about toys compared to us because in japan this is something that's hurtful to power Ranger fans <laughs> is that they have better morphers, they have better mechs, they have everything that is it's a dream land. Why does Japan always get the good shit? Basic, that's basically the words of every angry fanboy in the Power Ranger fandom. It's just like, okay, we'll buy the Sentai shit, but why don't we get this in America again? Because after Jungle Fury, which is in 2009, 
I bl- or 2008, I'm sorry. Yeah, because RPM was 2009. In 2008 is when the actual Japanese molding and tr- um, where they brought it into America was is stopped. But, um, yeah. It's crazy. I think we can end it here. I mean, there's really not much to talk about. It's just a topic we wanted to bring in um, because I'm pretty sure a lot of us miss the way toys were built back then. Oh, I'm sure. Um, and you know, if anything, uh, I would, I would definitely start up a petition for people to actually build the toys like they're supposed to. <laughs> Don't be lazy about it. Yeah. Cause it seems like all they do is they just want to mass produce it and just, it's like kids won't tell the difference, but there, there's more marketing going into adults too. Yeah. You know, um, and ha- I think Hasbro tries to attempt to do things with their toys, but um, when it comes to Transformers... That's really all they got. Uh, that, and then once they have a G.I. Joe movie come out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they've got other brands like Lola's Pet Shop and My Little Pony, but that's for another time. And they got Star Wars, too. But Star Wars, the new movie coming out, is probably going to draw a lot of attention to toys coming out. Um, once that happens, I'd like to see what they do with the new Millennium Falcon. I want to see if they're actually going to do a giant size Millennium Falcon as we did they did when we were kids in the nineties. Yeah. I don't want some derpy ass small thing that rolls on wheels and just opens for the sake of opening. Only time will tell because we got another year before the movie. Yeah, I think. Well, I made a suggestion this time, Kenneth. What do you want to suggest for the next nineties talk? I'm kind of torn between whether or not we should do video games or to, or or possibly. I don't know how how much experience you had with Toonami back then, but... I got a good discussion, you know, you're talking about video games. The Super Nintendo versus the Sega Genesis, the Bit Wars era. Well, then I guess we could do video games and possibly save Toonami for another time. I honestly, I have never watched Toonami. Oh. I never did. Or any programming block. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll probably talk about next week, we'll talk about the, uh... The, what did I say again? Video the games. SFS. Yes. The video games. Video games, yeah. You guys remember the Bit Wars. That's still a topic now. It's not as much as the console not wars. Not as much, but there are people out there that do comparisons. Um, but I'll bring in some of my favorite games, which is mostly video game and TV shows, but or TV shows and movie video games, but still. Um, but yeah, anyway guys, I'm Cody. I'm Kenny. And uh, we'll be back another time.